get to the last, the last, all right. <laughs> from our, welcome to that business interrupt where we spill all the beans. And based on feedback, apparently, like I talk too fast, so I'm just gonna try and slow it down. I just naturally talk really fast, but when I'm excited to, it's just all over the place. But I'll just like try and slow it down, and so you can understand what I'm saying. But it's good to have Jennifer and Tayola here once again. And today's topic is very interesting, as I said. If you read my blog, <laughs> okay, why am I shouting? So, if you read my blog. All right, mm -hmm. you know that I write on different topics, and what we're talking about today will be um, the blog post called Kill Your Willy Flavor Chocolate. And it's just basically about like opinions and what people think, and how people are gonna mind their own business mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff like that. But I'll start by reading um, from the blog post if I'm able to get it in time. Hey, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> um, I'll start by reading from the blog post. I um, just need to go back. I just put up something today and the feedback hasn't... I'm just actually just waiting to hear from my mom and what she'll say because it's my, my final post about her. Um, so it's called Philip... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> so I just realized I'm not recording on Garage Man. So... <laughs> sorry. I went to like he's not even recording. <laughs> that show, basically, maybe that is recording. So I'm just um take two. <laughs> You're welcome. Please, can you change my song this time? I don't want to do la da la da la da. Okay, we know what we'll do for him. <laughs> you don't know what you do for him. I am. <laughs> I literally have to do this all over again, but. Yeah, what comes to that business therapy? I'll literally be recording one video for YouTube and, I, and this is just interesting. It's, it means to be an interesting show. But I, you're welcome to that business therapy where we spill all the beans. And we've already done like, we've already done like, we've already done like intros and stuff like that. So, yeah. Shall I, I go over again? Yeah, we have to. Yeah, we have to. No, but I have to be calm. But for the, for, if you want to see the proper, proper intro, go to our YouTube page. I be therapy, but for the podcast, you have to keep it like short and simple. So I literally have to even cut it out. So yes, as I said prior, I talk really, really fast. So I'm just gonna try and slow it down for the man then. Okay, so let me just calm down because I've had a lot of sugar today. Because Jennifer went to buy me ice cream, but then that's not supposed to. Hey, everybody, let me know. That's another point. But yeah, so for this podcast, we'll be talking about like one of my blog posts called F titled <laughs> "Titled Kelly Really Flavor Chocolate." And if you remember my blog, yeah, this is your person. I'm kind of calling you. I'll find another name for you. I just Raz, like yeah, you're not existing in my atmosphere. But if you read my blog post, you know that um, there's a blog post called Killing Willy Flavor Chocolate. Killing Willy Flavor <clears throat> Chocolate. That's what we'll be talking about today. And it's basically about opinions. And I'll start by like reading like the first par paragraph. And it says, Charlie, they said, what would they think? What would they say? They will talk. They, 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 they. Who at all is they? Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. 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 <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think they what depends on on what it is they are talking about. So they can be society, they can be your parents, mm. they can be your friends, mm. they can be your for parents, please. <laughs> <laughs> they can be sometimes a figment of our imagination of what mm. we That's think true. they are. But we know who they are at every point in time if we are honest to ourselves. Do you? But, but, but who are told this day? I mean, I agree. <clears throat> there is everybody apart from yourself. I think. Mm. So, this is, so this is just a mind game. Because I listen to my mind, my parents will say, What would they say? Is I this mean, a mind I, game? I don't think it's a mind I think game. Is you, it? Even for myself, and maybe both of us identify having pastors as parents, a lot of it was, What would they say? What would everyone else say? Okay. If I decided to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if, if I decided to wear maybe a dress that was slightly short because I believe I'm short, I can get away with short dresses. <laughs> but, <laughs> you are short. but it was this like this one is not what would they say. No opinion. It is the fact that you have to look apart to most people. No, but my issue is if I did wear a slightly shorter dress than what is recommended for a person. You can get some it. No, it's always what would everyone else say if you dress like this. 
Exactly. I always thought some people could get away with like wearing short stuff. That's because. what I believe, but clearly they. they. <laughs> what would they say? They they would say something, and it happened to me because I remember one time I was leading worship at church at this time, and I mean I was in the spirit, I was giving it. Everybody was throwing hands, man. The spirit was just moving. I came down the stage, and one of the um, choir people. She asked me, so were you happy just like that on stage? Mm -hmm. Upon all the things that could have been said, the only thing she said was, why were you exposing yourself on stage? Meanwhile, I left my father's house and he didn't mention anything. So it's one of those things. It's everybody has an opinion about you, but at what point do you say they don't matter? There's only one person that matters, and that's God, in my opinion. But at what point do we allow they to influence every decision in our lives? They do. If you ask me who they is, I mean, I have a problem with whoever they is. Like, like, do we teach a long time? So regardless of what day we say, or what day we think, we don't care. We we'll do it. Because at the end of the day, that's what I think. If you don't do it, they'll talk. If you do it, they'll talk. Like, so just happy yourself. So me, regardless of who they is, I don't care. I'll just do what I want to do. But, what? No, but sometimes they is good sometimes because some you can't live in isolation and you can't say so it's only your parents advice that you take so sometimes they <laughs> depending on who they are their opinions matter and should be considered why, why do we attach so much importance to whoever <clears throat> they is like? it's not attaching importance it's just i guess there's the balance of it i what like was it you or nina said at what point do you say you know they i should shut they out or you know i shouldn't listen to what they are saying and at what point should you actually consider what they are saying because sometimes truth of the matter is we don't see what they see sometimes what they see may not be their reality but in cases where it is the reality when do we draw that boundary and say actually we should probably consider what they are saying and it depends on who they are because if it's just society in my opinion i don't get <laughs> <laughs> In my, in my opinion, we shouldn't listen to they. But if they, <laughs> sorry, but going. if they are your parents, mm. if they are trusted people in society, they they you, we are buying food to eat and taking care of you. Of even, our then, even then, yeah. if they are like your pastors or certain mm. people that you, you listen to, trusted people, I'm not saying everything they say follow, but at least consider. But I said, who is they like? You keep saying they. So come, why can people say like, what will people think? Or is it the same as no, they? No, they do say what do people think. What will they, people they, think? They. It's they are they. I mean, I personally think they, as in the context of what we're speaking, they are not your friends. They are the people who, whatever you do, they'll talk about it. Okay. And I think me personally, I, I probably feel strongly about this because I've had they dictating most of my life. To the point I literally had to say, enough is enough. No, what they? That is people at school, people at church, teachers. I mean, and one of the main thing is, you know, coming into this country fresh, like they call me a freshie. Mm -hmm. A freshie. Time. Fresh off the boat. So the guys came in and had like, was like four yeah. fresh off the boat. Yeah. 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 That's what. Oh. Never, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, coming from you know, Af an African country, yeah. the main thing is you come to school, you study. And I was doing certain courses I hadn't done in Ghana. So I came here with that mindset, yes, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna study. And then anytime I had free time, I'll go to the teacher and say, you know, can I get extra work? Or, you know, just because I came in year eleven, I was writing my GCSEs in less than a year, like eight months, seven months. So I had to catch up from year ten. So I was trying really hard and I remember one time I went to my dance teacher and I asked her for her little stereo to go and dance and practice mm -hmm. and whatnot and I couldn't find any space so I brought it back to her and all she did was literally laugh at my face and tell me why are you trying so hard you're gonna fail anyway I mean I, that was the only subject I failed in my GCSE because basically they she had no confidence in my abilities and I believed it at that point. And there have been people I've believed, even the fact that I chose to do childcare. Someone was like, why are you doing why are you doing a diploma? Why don't you do A levels? My thought, my path is different from yours. 
And if I had listened to whoever said that to me, I may not have been where I am today, but I had to have other people, other days in my life who could guide me on the right path. So even your closest friend may at some point believe they're doing the right thing for you, but their opinions may also be steering you in the wrong place. So I think as a person, you need to be able to discern when is the right time I listen to somebody and when is the right time I disregard somebody's advice. Some people may be, you know, genuine, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So are you saying like there are, there are like good days and there are bad days? Like they literally like... I mean, I wouldn't... Yeah. I don't think all these are there to make your life mm -hmm. difficult or to put so much, so much pressure on you. I do think there are some people who mean well, but unfortunately, perhaps they're not going the journey you're going. So they see things differently from the way you see things. My abilities, I could not have done A-levels. I've said it so many times. I'm not an academic whatsoever. So for me to go do A-levels, it was like, no. But I knew the path I wanted to go. She is an academic. So for her, it was like A-levels. She knew her path. Exactly. But she felt my path should be like hers when I wasn't, we're very different, as close as we were, or we are, you know. <clears throat> so it's a matter of like a parent hammering the day 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 concepts in our minds so much so that at some point mm -hmm. we begin to see things from that <laughs> angle. Jennifer, is that, is that what it is? Like, <laughs> you've said it like whole day, whole day, is now you know, for you. The funny thing is, um, growing up in Ghana, not necessarily my parents, but growing up in Ghana, adults would say, don't listen to what people say. Be your own person, be unique. Yes. And they would turn around and come and say, this thing that I wear, what would they say? Exactly. You know, or your, me, my own was makeup. <laughs> <laughs> what would they say you know or just certain decisions you make and you were saying and i completely agree your path is different from every even your own parents path and sometimes it takes well not sometimes it always takes discernment you may not know everything but it gets to a point where you have to be a bit more resolute in who you are what your path is and i guess it comes with knowing yourself and as a christian Putting your trust in God more than you even put in your parents or the people that you trust with you, you know, to advise you. <clears throat> because at certain points, for I'll make, you know, for instance, when I decided to make a cap or move to come to the UK, I think I was the only person that made a decision. I made a decision and I went to tell people, okay, this is what I want to do. If I had listened to what they were saying, I would have stayed where I was. And, you know, with the mindset of I've started there, it's easier to progress there. And some of these things, at the moment, at that time, it's difficult to say that, okay, I'm going to follow what I believe is the right thing. In, you know, in spite of what they are, they may be critical people in your life. But it's only in hindsight that you're like, okay, it's good I didn't listen to them. You know, so. I mean, because it's very difficult when, like, most of the day, like, the days are seen, speaking along the same lines. And it's like you are of a different mind and because the parents have hammered the world days, what would they think? And now you do it with yourself yes, as well. It's very difficult for you to see like outside what everybody else is saying. So it's just like a really, really strong person to you be able to. You have to try to be careful. I can't be bounce! <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> oh my oh, god! Man, because this topic is like, I'm just tired of people and it's just opinions, opinions. Me, I, I teach and let me just say, like, as I'm going to I was doing one to my mom. You know, like, me, I, I, I studied, I studied, I studied my brother really carefully. Like, he got something from my first. I washed my hands from you. Do it tonight. And he was free. Like, oh, and I said, I said ah, that's a trick. So, me too. <laughs> and then, and my, my brother, you know what? Like, I do what you like. Oh, God. So, just say something. That was it. Like, that was it. That was the end of it. Like my parents were like, you know, but I just do what you want. You don't care. Like a time. Hey, yeah, they didn't know that was that was the plan. My mom will be listening. I'm old now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I'm old now. So yeah. So that, for me, that's what it was. So um, my next question would be that: What's the most most outrageous thing that you were told that they would talk about, apart from makeup? Can we skip me and go to and I have to think about this. <laughs> What's the most outrageous thing that I was told? 
I think it was about my haircut, you know. Like I want like a flat top or something. <laughs> First of all, my father used to cut my hair for me. <laughs> and then at some point, you know, like I can't be living like this. Like, <laughs> I can't like he was the best. Daddy the Baba. <laughs> I don't know whether was he saving money. I don't even know. Or maybe he was trying to prevent from catching some disease. But like at some point, I was willing to go through the, the disaster of the disease than to go <laughs> than to go to the laughter. Like I think I just went. In, I think I went to get like a side bend that was long. So I'm very you know like hey, what people say. Oh, then just a really do that. And then like uh, no, I'm just never. Most for me it's in my head like. My hair has always been like a topic. Like I've tried, I think I've tried everything from mohawks to every <laughs> everything. So my thing is always about my hair. Like what people say. For me, it's mostly my hair. I don't know about you guys though. Outrageous. I don't think. I don't think I have an outrageous one. For what me, was mostly... the most? Is there any one of them that you can remember? Like, oh God, ah. yes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was so <laughs> hmm. So I had come home from you know uni one of these summers in Ghana and I was going to church and you know how when you don't live in Ghana going to church is not a whole dressing yeah, and free. Yeah. You, you you go as you are not that you don't as you are. <laughs> but yeah so I had worn um I had, I, don't know, I had even put effort you know yes. like, <laughs> I have worn like skirts a, a skirt like you know one of these midi for you know fitted skirts and you know regular top um she made him fine <laughs> and i had see from you know gone downstairs ready to you know board the car and let us go and then they saw me they, <laughs> they, they, they. <laughs> they saw me oh my dress like a harlot oops yeah i mean i'm wearing a midi Emphasis on midi <laughs> skirt. I don't know what that and is, that midi skirt is just beyond your knees. After your knees. Oh. So to be fair, my mom would I've never seen my mother's knees before. No, <laughs> as in it covers your knees. I'm not seeing my mother's what's that part called? My mother's shin before. I'm just saying that like I know my mom would also be the, I know the house my sister went through to be able to wear Stuff above him. So all just, they, they forget is all they forget is that. Like, so they can even be parents, you know. Oh yeah, they yeah. forget that you yourself, like, trust the way you are bringing up your child. But you've done a good job. Look, I was wearing midi skirts and a top. I was going to church, right? And everybody had dressed. I came down and said, "I'm looking like you know." And they said, "I should go and wear jeans, jeans." Why is that more revealing than a skirt? They said, "I should go and wear jeans because they, i.e., the wider they." Will talk, you know, make us say, You know, that kind of thing. I went to wear jeans, jeans that will remove your legs. One, one, I mean, my thighs are big. Well, boom, boom. <laughs> I will draw you. That one, mom, was what they accepted. accepted. And so, that was me. That's my own experience. I don't understand up to now, but I guess it's a laughable moment in hindsight. Did you have any like? I think my, my mom and I have probably gone through so many things because mm -hmm. my mom was also a pastor's daughter so she and uh, the days came from generations before <laughs> the, all the ancestors were the days but I think my main thing is she okay that was maybe not a they but just the idea that I expected my brothers to do the same house chores as I did so if they expect me to sweep or to wash the dishes or to do domestic work. My expectation is that my brothers were going to do because they're going to get married. And I think that one, my mom and I, it was more so, you know, you are going to marry, you are going to be a wife. What will your husband say? And I'm like, what will your husband say? supposed to you know uh, uh, be, and I think my mom wanted me to be a certain way and now I appreciate what she was saying but at the same time I still feel my brothers are gonna get married they also need to be able to treat their wives and do the same things I'm doing she can't be slaving in the kitchen and doing all the domestic work like is there something going on here that I'm not aware of? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I'm really like. I'm fighting no, for the brothers. Just so you know. I think that was 
one of the main things. My mom's one was always mainly church people, so short clothes. Um, if there's a little bit of cleavage, that was my dad. My dad does not like cleavage being shown at all. So my dad would be like, cover it. He would not say that. He would tell you, cover yourself. I think, like I said, there are times where some of the opinions of the days are worth it and to be considered and for you to measure up. What do I apply? But there are some, like you're saying, are absolutely outrageous. Um, why, why should I listen to it? So mm. yeah, I think my mom had a tough time with me because I would always mm. question why. They, my question was why. I think that was me as well. Like she's like, why? At least I'm like, 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 calling me Mister Why. <laughs> Everything why? Why? I'm like, my next question is why. Like, mm -hmm. and for me, I need to. You gotta just tell me things. You need to tell me why I'm so doing so that I can. Mm -hmm. I, need, I need to process like it's a pent one. how you deal with it's a pent up one. <laughs> up here, I need to take me reason to. If you don't give me a reason why I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. So because it makes me happy. If I'm happy and it doesn't make you happy, unless it's, it affects somebody else, then whatever it's just opinions, and opinion is not a human being. So if it affects opinions, I don't care because it's not a human yeah. being. Do you know what I'm saying? Opinion is the hell. Hey, oh, so if opinion is the hell. Fiji. Fiji, right? Yeah, but if it's not, I'm, I'm not going to. So my mom and I. The other thing too, I'm very like I can't be quiet. So me, you tell me I'm like I'll nod my head, but I'll still do it. This kind of thing. So let me sit on the floor. I've sat, I've sat on the floor. I've sat on the floor. I've sat on the floor. So yeah, but, uh, yeah. That's true. One of those. Uh, okay. So speaking your mind. What do you think of speaking your mind? In what context? In everything. I know some people that do just speak their mind, regardless. The Bible. <laughs> Church. So basically, Proverbs oh chapter God. three wow. talks about wisdom. What's it? Okay. Proverbs chapter verse, three. Verse in the book of Proverbs. In the Proverbs. Yeah, there's that same Proverbs and move on. Verse Proverbs. Verse. Oh, chapter th the whole three is my son wisdom. Okay. But basically, the Bible encourages us, or you know, tells us to apply wisdom. Mm. We pray for God to give us wisdom. We don't pray for God to give us wisdom to you to just be, have wisdom to use it. What was the question again? <laughs> Speaking your mind. Speaking your mind. mind yeah. Apply wisdom. There's a place. There's a time. There's a way. There's a way. There's a context in which you can speak your mind. Don't say be. Ask, you know, some people will say it under the guise of, "As for me, that I speak my mind," and they will say things that are hurtful. Hurtful things to people. Oh, me, that's how I am. Don't take offense. Offense taken, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and other people say, you know, it's because I like you or because I love you. That's why I'm speaking my mind. Even in those situations, know when to speak your mind. Or how to say it. How to say it. Yeah. And some, sometimes, shut up. Sometimes, if you don't speak your mind, the person will not die. That is not a do or die situation. There are certain, you know, say pick your battles. I feel like speaking your mind is one of those things. Pick and choose when you speak your mind and how you speak it. So, I'm, I'm for speaking your mind with wisdom. Um, and I think that wisdom will, you know, it covers the whole context, when, mm -hmm. how, and even who you're speaking and I your think mind to. Even when you're talking about, you know, who you're talking to, sometimes you may not even have that relationship with that person to be able to honestly say mm -hmm. something that's critical. So you may have to go to a close friend of them to say, look, this is what, you know, I've observed that's your close friend i think you know they would be more receptive if you said it and maybe that's what can change it's not about gossiping because mm -hmm. that's another thing that people do they'll talk and then they'll go and tell everybody else but i definitely agree in terms of speaking your mind i've never believed when i was much 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 younger when she was a fighter and someone did somebody be there and she just let her listen that's why i really did right but you say this it all the time though so it's fine but yeah if you tell me they didn't know me too i was camping i didn't cry so you can't be so careful i was hard body hard body but yeah what was it oh but oh but you know what was it nigeria she said oh but no, but apparently so just don't mean to catch you i don't know you know how god is oh is fat in Nigeria, it means like hard person, like you oh. know, like hard person. So, but we'll be like, the guy is hard, <laughs> hard girl. <laughs> Make your point. <laughs> um, yeah, I think 
I agree with you in terms of wisdom, um, how you say it to a person. I've never been one to say, just speak your mind. And a lot of people use it in the guise of being rude. Mm. And I think I have close friends where I can speak my mind. I'm not rude, but I'm very honest. And I can tell you straight, this is the situation. And they receive it because we have that relationship. There are other people that I know the type of person that they are. So I go with it in a softer softer way you know have a conversation slip it in and then talk about it or in a form of counseling you know what's going on with you what you know and talk to them because you need for every person approach, approach is, exactly is there is a point. way people receive information you can't say your approach is to be accepted by everybody otherwise what's the point of saying something that somebody will not receive is is waste because I mean, it's not a communication is when you send out the information, mm -hmm. the person receives and then counts, sends a response back. There's no response. You haven't communicated because the person has not understood. If the person doesn't understand, there's no communication. There's no response. There's no communication. So basically, if you, me and you are not like that, you can't come and speak your mind to me. I also speak my mind. And then it becomes an altercation. Yeah, exactly. Do you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, I mean. So or the person <clears throat> will just shut down and will not even oh, no, no, receive whatever no, it is. No, no. No. Are, are, I put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. battle. Yeah, I just watch you like, mm. I'm not a back and forth. I find it very mundane. What's yeah, the point? I find it very exhausting to exchange with me and God. Oh, let me not reveal myself. <laughs> Let's just end it there. I find it very exhausting to exchange. You say, I say. Again, I always say that. I remember the last time me and I were having a conversation. And it was more so. A disagreement and all of a sudden I realized both of us were raising our voices and I'm like but why are we shouting <laughs> it didn't even make any sense like why are we even shouting and in my head I started laughing up to now when I think about it I always laugh because it's like nobody was receiving anything at that so point. I was just wasting my energy so, <laughs> I was like why are, we, why are we both raising our so that's voice? a trick so when she goes quiet she basically means I'm making noise <laughs> I'm making noise I get that but, but, but in terms of speaking your mind I know it's this, that's the thing like most people would say now like, I'm speaking my mind, I'm speaking my mind but if you are speaking your mind and the person is not listening to you what's the essence of wasting exactly. your energy? That's one. And then you should be like, you should know who you're talking to and how the person is receptive. You no, know, so because if you don't know me, I can't speak your mind. I'm telling you what I'm telling you. That's why it's like this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is it lit? Is it lit? I yeah. think it's lit. Anyways, <laughs> Guys, listen. <laughs> it's not that joke. Wow. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you're speaking your mind, and, it, and it's, that's I think the most people, like a lot of people would are speaking my mind and speaking your mind. When you come and meet me, that maybe some days if I have energy, I'm eating mango, I'm not mango. I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm eating, I can just talk. But some days I just took it and just walk away. But this is one guy my my wife who does that a lot. Like he will say helpful things, right? And they say, "Well, oh, I'm joking." <laughs> You know, around them, like, you put those things out there in the atmosphere and so you're joking, but it's already out there in the yeah. atmosphere. You set it for everybody to hear. And if the people don't know who I am, that's the impression they'll have of me. You're not joking. You've set your mind. You, you're not, oh, I'm speaking my mind. I am just a truthful person. I don't know how to lie. What? You don't, you, you don't have to be hurtful to speak the truth. The truth does not hurt. Like, in the sense of, I'm using it as a jab to hurt your feelings. Yeah, sometimes somebody revealing the truth might be hurtful for you because you then realize something about yourself. But for you to use words to hurt somebody and then say, I'm a truthful person. No, you're a coward. Because you use yeah, that you to hide, so. exactly, to cover up who you really are. Which, and me, I'll be honest, I used to be a very mean person. Me, God has saved me. No, she's lying. She uh, turned and she changed. <laughs> no, that one is even different. That was fighting. Fighting changed. I started using my words. Mm. Of, I mean, I could say things intentionally to cut people down, and then one day, I think God spoke to me like, "What are Ooh, you getting? Come on. What are you getting? Preach, preach, girl. Oh my God! Like legit. Yes. And what, you can talk to mm -hmm. some of our mutual friends. They know I was extreme. If there was oh, gosh, drama in school, Zion's name is inside. Wow. I was always in the midst of drama, I was always in the midst of arguments, I was in the midst of all of those things. So, so which other schools? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Yes, I 
It's the sweet turn. The side is cool. Excuse me. Our mutual friend. <laughs> that same mutual friend you use for help when you do your stuff. Which one? He went to the same school I went to. Which friend is that? Jeffrey Menu. Let me start in there. Oh my god, Jeffrey, this is amazing. Jeffrey, where's the start with you? Oh wow. Me and I have been taking resources for By every school there's a gem. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Even in a site too. There's a gem. Moving on. Moving Anyways, on. <laughs> as I was saying, I was a very mean person. So I know when people say that it's not it's a guide for their meanness. It's not necessarily I'm being truthful. Just to say this, me, this is what I this is what I've come to. With a resolve to have this is your resolve. <laughs> but for me, and you said you went to a good school. Yeah, I'm, like I had a moment. Right. Let me enjoy my moment. Still having the moment. <laughs> yes, this is what we have come to understand that if you are laughing and I'm not laughing, it's not a joke. You're laughing at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's very subjective. Hey, no, it's not that you are joking and I'm not laughing, you're laughing at me. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do with you. If we are both laughing, then it's a joke. Let me just put that in the other. But I don't think it's fair though. I know. I, I think maybe we might be going away from the subject. No. Yeah. But Nick can do I'm this here. Yeah. And sorry. like it has called me, but, <laughs> but I will laugh about the situation because my friend is funny. Yeah, when I do it, we'll stop laughing, we'll be like, I'm not joking. So should I stop? Should I stop? Like, why? I'm enjoying it no, now. Why are you taking the outfit? Like, I, I was just playing out. I didn't know what's the best about that. I just had to let her out. It's not a waste thing. No, I'm just speaking my mind, though. It might be funny <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm just speaking my mind, though. I don't know what I'm speaking my mind in this world. Okay, so how do you speak your truth and not be offended? And if I, this is my target, <laughs> basically, I bought a chair so and I don't want to be the target because it was expensive. <laughs> it was an expensive chair. I love me the chair to be there. And if there's a one year, if there's a one year, I mentioned it, people probably wouldn't have seen that. <laughs> After one year, let me, okay, just in case I want to return it. Wow. I think the word this block is if you want. What? What? <laughs> Anyways, how do you how do you speak a truth, truth? How do you speak a truth and not be offensive? Like I was saying, wisdom. Mm. I think, like you were saying as well, you have to know the relationship you have with the person. There are some people when I'm I I see something, where I feel like I, we need to be honest. There's a way we will talk about it, and it may not be received well in that particular instance. But they know where it's coming from. And because of the relationship we've built, it's not offensive in the long run. Whereas for other people, like you were saying, maybe it's not up to me to say. So the first point is truth. it's about one, it's about the relationship, the relationship you have with the person. With the person. We determine if it's offensive or it's not. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> that one, even with those kind of ones, no, it's timing as well. No one to say it. There's sometimes they're just like, you, in your heart of hearts, this is what I want to say now, 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 now. But then you know. And personally, you will know if you apply brain. You, you will know that this is not the right time to say it. So I think that for me, that's one thing. I mean, there are others, but the main thing for me is knowing the relationship I have with the person and timing what I want to say at the right time. Mm. You know? And sometimes... We are speaking truth from a place of anger or from a place of spite. Like we want to prove a point. And I think if you plan your speaking around those times, mm -hmm. me, I've, there are times where I've said something <laughs> and I've had to shamefully go back and apologize or just shamefully kind of, God forgive me, like brush over it in the hopes that, you know, it's whatever I've forgotten. But yeah, timing and relationship. I agree. I think, and I was I'm going to say that it's okay to apologize when you've offended somebody. I think um, trying to act like this is me makes it worse. If you know this person has been offended, there's nothing wrong in saying, I'm sorry. You know, I meant it from a genuine place, but maybe I didn't say it well. So, you know, forgive me, but, you know, I meant this, but maybe my delivery... Uh, but <clears throat> I think you do need to cultivate that. It's hard. It's not easy to always say sorry, but you need to cultivate that we all make mistakes. 
and it's okay to make a mistake and it's amazing or okay to go and say i'm sorry and i think you mentioned something about um other than the relationship also the people who like to do i told you so i told you so about timing there are times most times i told you so does not even matter because at that point the person has realized their mistake they don't need you as a friend or family member now adding to it to say look i told you they don't need that if they've made a mistake they've made it just move on from that and i think we do like to dwell on um i told you so it's a bit too much being right that's a bit that's too much it's not always necessary to be right sometimes allow the person to speak the way they want to because they are offended or they are hurt or whatnot even though you are right but i believe sometimes peace in a relationship and having that family um, bond is more important than proving yourself right if it's going to risk the relationship at the end if that relationship is important to you so for me i told you so is i try as much as possible to say don't to not say i told you so or um look at what you've done or whatnot because at that point the person's already feeling low feeling bad you don't need to add to it are words important like do words have an impact words Oh, <laughs> there's a saying i've heard before i've forgotten is it something something about words something something and um, sticks and stones may break my bones but words kill and uh, uh, something wow. like that we <laughs> didn't go to eat school guys <laughs> I feel like this school argument is like it's done and dusted It's bitch. not, because no you bring it back up again You know that people who always try to win first position are the people who didn't win it But yeah I, I, I carried class, but wow, I still carried it We didn't even want to talk about this <laughs> You never told me this I carried a table in class Jesus <laughs> But yeah, what was I saying I've forgotten? Um, you said words mm. Yes, words are very important Me, I've never been a physical person words So I know how words can impact people Regretfully, no. I've used words, you know, negatively in the past. I know how when people speak to me, people remember how you make them feel. We always say this thing, mm, yeah. and in most cases, they feel a certain way because of what you said to mm -hmm. them. And um, and sometimes they may not even be verbal, but words, you know, no words. I think words, one, are impactful, good or bad. They're impactful, and um, and it doesn't matter whether you intentionally, you know, use the word a certain way. Sometimes words that fly out of our mouths, off the bat, you know, without thought, those are the most painful words. Okay, we are coming back to say, oh my god, I shouldn't have said that. It's difficult because you yourself you realize that I shouldn't have mm -hmm. said that. And in the same vein, you know, saying good things to people, sometimes you may not mean what you're saying. But you look at somebody and like this is not the right time to be saying hurtful things and you just have to be encouraging so i think words are words important yes and i think it's important that all of us if because whether we like it or not we are there in other people's <laughs> lives so and so we, we we make sure that our words do not bring down people yeah do your words important? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, and I tell you from the perspective only because I me, mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a Christian. But <laughs> I just had to. I don't know about them, but I'm a Christian. So the Proverbs that I put in. That's not right. They said that who need. She she couldn't find it in the Bible. Was it, was it correct? She just Jesus said this is Proverbs 3. The whole of Proverbs is Because I've read the whole of Proverbs. The whole of Proverbs is No, 3 is specifically about it. The whole of Proverbs is. Oh. Anyway, as I was saying, thing. guys. If God knows our hearts. I have Bible on my phone. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. But all I was saying is that if you even look at how God created the world, he used words. Preach! And that's how important Ooh! the words are. It also says that you know, what God has declared, you can't go back on it. Wow. Because, you know, God's words, are, he holds them Come as on. true. Yes. So I think even for us as human beings, mm -hmm. people have said things and people are going to commit suicide. That's how important. Like, it says what? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death and Absolutely. The power of the what we say to people can either break them down or it can lift them up. It's a shepherd on a two-edged sword. See, I know my pipe of I started it though. I knew it, it as well. Where is it? Where is it? That one, I told you that I carried class. I didn't know. No, I was the best thing. <laughs> Nobody has the rights. But what words, but are really, words, words, words are really important. I also, because for somebody like me growing up who didn't see a lot of things, I listened a lot. Mm -hmm. 
And so things that you'd stay with me would stick with me versus things that you would do. Absolutely. So I remember somebody, because I would keep saying this, that I always wanted to name my first child Josiah because I always wanted to. I don't know if I'm still going with it. Josiah. But there was a friend of mine, <laughs> no, but a friend of mine's brother, like, and not because I'm just going to pick Michelle from Lincoln, like, I can walk through the house, nobody will say a single word to you. And one time, this guy just stood with me and spoke to me for like hours. He made me feel comfortable. Yes. And I still remember him, then his name was just like, oh my God, I like this guy's personality so much. If I have a child, this is the kind of personality I would hope I want him to have. So, so you don't like my personality? <clears throat> no, so I'm just saying like... It's a question. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just saying that. But I see, but, and this was like when I was like in junior high school, and I still remember how it made me feel. And even recently, like I was, I can't tell what kind of I do, but I was at work, right? <laughs> I work and like, I was trying to get, I was going to get one of the guys I was working with. And I went into a room and I, I greeted them nicely and I said, I'm here to pick up this person. And they literally just ignored me. I went back to what we were doing. So I went back and I'm like, ah, these people. So I, I, I sat down for like 20 minutes. It was just ignored. And then some guy, like one of their colleagues in that department comes in. And he walks up to me and... COVID-19, I was trying to give him like a fist bump. I'm giving you sign to do this, to remove something from Have I got happy? The other side. All right, okay. Sorry, guys. Anyways, so, is this for then? Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, so, um, so he walks up to me, I started giving him a fist bump, and he pulls me into a hug, which is odd, because I'm like, not anymore like that, but he hugged me, like, he's like, oh, these guys are ignoring you, I said, go, okay, I'll get a guy for you. And he went like, it was not even in this department, like, it's in the same department, but it's not like in the Jewish jurisdiction. And so, and he went and brought the guys for me, was like literally going up and down the flight of stairs. And I'm like, wow, this guy didn't have to do that. Like, and it was like things like that leave impressions on people. Because, I, because me, like, I was like, this is going to be a terrible day, because this is, considering how it started, I'm not a those people. If it starts wrong, well, I expect it to go downhill from there. Mm -hmm. But I literally, but then, I've learned to speak positively. So now, when it's going down, I'm like, oh my God, this is a good day. This is a good, I keep, like, like professing that into my existence. And I believe, so, I understand the importance of words, and I understand the importance of, the importance of, that words have on other people. And so I'm very careful of what I say. And I read this thing somewhere, I don't, can't remember where I read it, but it said like, you know, have helpful words are like grabbing nails through a piece of wood. Even when you're going to apologize, it's like pulling out the nails, but the scars are still there. You can apologize, but you still said, I feel like you still put it out there in the atmosphere. And there are people, there will be certain people in the room who heard you say those things that have left, I will never hear you come and make that correction. Yeah. So in your impression, what's very said about me, is what I said. Final statement. How do you control yourself from saying hateful things when you're angry? I think for me in particular, I made a conscious effort knowing my background. So <laughs> it was a very it's so intentional. <laughs> it's very intentional for me. And I'm not one of those people that I wait for a situation to happen. And then now I try and correct my mistakes. I always think about if a situation like this should happen, this is the proper way to do it. So it's almost like I prepare myself for anything. For me to get angry to the point where things come out is very extreme. And in the last 15 years, maybe it's happened twice, where I've gotten to that point where all sorts of all rationality goes out the window. Very, very, but I think for me, I do take my time, I think about it, I reflect. Anytime I do make a mistake, I do take time to think about the mistakes I've done and how could I be better, how could I improve myself? Because I think as a human being, being stagnant in the way we are, it's not helpful for anybody, especially when we know the areas about us that are not good. Mm. So I do take my time to reflect and think about how could I be better if I've made a mistake? So I do, yeah, when it comes to controlling my tongue what i will say maybe i need to work on is sometimes in jest what's that english <laughs> what yes, is... as a joke i may say a couple of things that may be a bit you know uh, risky for my friends but you know nobody has come to me to say zaina stop it zaina <laughs> stop it <laughs> <laughs> jennifer <laughs> yeah how do you uh, arrange yourself from saying helpful things when you're angry as the Christian that I am, <laughs> okay. honestly speaking, and just now she's made you like want to put your Christianity, but it's not that. It's not that deep. 
I'm not saying who you are. No, but that doesn't mean anything. We're not minding them. <laughs> them. <laughs> oh wow! But basically, honestly speaking, I had to. It's something I had to pray about because, for me, it's words. I feel like I have a good command over words, not over English, over words, and I've in the past used it. Going so sort of self-serving. And like I said, I don't like exchanges. The flip side of that was I like to speak my mind and walk away, which is what I like to speak my mind and walk away and not have to deal with the repercussions. And so it's something I had to pray about because that, in a sense, is pride. And I'm now, as I'm saying it now, I realize that you know it's sort of pride, like it was pride. But basically, how I deal with that was, you know, I started with prayer just for more consciousness of when I'm speaking in, in situations. Because in some situations like and you want to say your mind and just walk off. And I, we're all humans. But I guess praying for that consciousness means also actively being conscious of the situation I'm in and whether I need to say what I want to say, what I really, really want to say. And I don't always get it right. But I think now, for the most part, I will just, you know, shut up <laughs> and then later on, you know, appropriate situation, appropriate person. It may come out as a vent, but in that instance, when it's coming out as a vent, it's not coming with the anger and it's not coming with that sort of, I need to be right, I need to be right sort of thing. It's coming with, you really know, da, 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 da. and again, relationship, who you are venting to, you know? So for me, I deal with it by, like I said, first of all, I had to pray for that consciousness, also being conscious of the situation I'm in, and to just venting, venting to a trusted source. That way, I know that that source will not take it beyond where it needs to go. We are venting and we are forgetting, mm -hmm. and that's it. I'm just checking if my stomach is showing. Anyways, so <laughs> I, I think for me, it's. I mean, just I, growing up, yeah, I used I used to fight a lot. I was very big. Me, they're yeah. calling me. Yeah, mm. fighter. Now, me, you see, for you, I'm shocked sure because I look at your body type and your height. Uh -huh. Hey, you should meet one who be they'll be carrying away. Anyways, <laughs> I used to fight a lot. Like, you no, know, I used to have an anger problem. Like, and for me, it was like, oh, my father has an anger problem, so me, it's more like a hereditary pride, so right, like my father's son, kind of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> you realize that. It's affecting your relationships with other people and it's not helping you. It's not helpful. So I decided to, as I said, identify that it's a problem. Why are you going to be like that? You have an anger problem. Oh, okay. Oh. You see, you see, you see how, grace, how gracious God is. You can't even believe it. I used to have an anger problem. But. <laughs> <laughs> with emphasis. No, like it was. And then the thing is, I had an anger problem and I was quiet too. So I made a boss up, Charlie. The straight thing is like I was just like angry and I was big. So I used to fight people and beat people. Like I remember one time I like, I got some boy and I removed his belt and used his belt to beat him. Huh. Like that's how. And then the teacher came and then they came and called me. Like it was I like the, like I used to be very ag aggressive, angry because for me I'm my father's I'm my, I'm my father's son. Wow. But and I realized it was a problem and I began to pray about it and God started working on it. But for me, this like literally. I come to understand that you will be tested by the thing that you talk about and the thing that you preach about. And that is, so you need to know that once you talk about these things and preach about these things, you will be tested. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I, I, I listened to a sermon by Walter and he says that sometimes the people who say things need them more than the people that are telling it. So you minister to yourself first and before you minister to other people. So this is my trick. When I get to know my nails, I just begin to recite, love is patient, love is kind. <laughs> love is patient, love is kind. And then I walk away. How many times have you said it this year? <laughs> <laughs> Even today! <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Today is just Even today! today. You come into contact with so, Because we are never in the house. <laughs> just you and I. <laughs> what did I do? No, I'm just joking. But. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, honestly, I'm just joking. But it's just generally something that I do like. I would just recite love is being love is kind. You know what I mean? No, that's, that's all I know. So that's what I would recite. And until like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I believe what I'm saying, and then I can love the person outside, which I show me, we can't fight later. 
Final word. Anybody that's struggling with day, what would you tell them? Is that being gay? I mean, I would say identify who they is first. There's some days that mean well, mm. and their words is helpful. There are other days, what other days, <laughs> other days who um, just talk for talking sake, for mm. having a conversation piece. And I think it comes down to those people in your life. Who are they in your life? You need to identify who they are and whose words mean something to you, and those words that you can disregard. So, I mean, those would be my words. And those that you can disregard, disregard them. Don't take it in and digest it and let it start you know, impact to you because it causes low self-esteem at some point. It causes you to question who you are, the very person that you are. The people whose words don't matter tend to, unfortunately, it's like bad news travels the fastest. Those who have the negative things to say about you, those are the things you tend to feed on a lot. So then take them out, focus on the days who want your best, <laughs> wants your best interest. Um, yeah, and then build yourself up on that. Jennifer, what, what advice would you give to you? Um, so briefly, in addition to what Zai was saying, um, build yourself up. So I think it's important to develop a strong self of self as sense a Christian of sense of English. What did I say? Self, self of self. self. Mommy, you I, 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 no, but I said, I allow you to go because it's I'm kind of close. I mean, I mean, I just allow you to flow because I said, my just surprised me, sir. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, develop a strong sense of self Ruffle. in God mm -hmm. as a Christian because, you know, in God, because once you have that sort of identity, it takes time to get there, but there's not a lot of days that will sway you. And when you also develop that sense of self in, in God, now you become you can become. Of course, you did. I mean, the last. But I mean, do you know, like the I think one of the episodes, the ice cream machine just went like. I was in there. Please, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody. Yeah, it's my neighbor I was doing caressing. <laughs> Yeah, so develop a strong self a sense hmm, sense of self into so patient says one by one. Sense. Repeat after me. Develop. <laughs> you wish to say one by one. Okay, develop. Develop a strong sense of self right. in God. Because you are the one that will feel the consequences of the decisions you take today, not the day. But it's all you like <laughs> Excuse, you know, excuse me, please come again. <laughs> okay. You are the one that will experience, experience the repercussions of the decisions you take today. Yes. Not the day, mm -hmm. basically. Absolutely. Not that you shouldn't listen today, as I was saying. There's a place that some days will play in your in life. Time. But if you your sense of self is in God, the decisions you take will not be dependent on what they say. It may be influenced to an extent. I will be so to a large extent dependent on what you personally believe God is leading you to do or the direction is leading you on or just certain things is a conviction nobody can force you to wear dress a certain way nobody can force you to speak a certain way you need that conviction and so that's why I'm saying that you know the sense of self because ultimately like I said the repercussions it comes on you and so, like I was saying earlier on, when I look back now, if I listened to some days, I probably wouldn't have been where I am now, you know. Um, like in the same vein, if I had, if I had listened to some days, I probably wouldn't have gone through certain hurdles that I could have avoided certain hurdles. So it's a balance, and I guess once you you develop that sense of self, you will know who to listen to, and who not to. That's it. For me, my advice is forget everybody. Look, be yourself, do what makes you happy. It's that one cool, it's more than one money. There is that white boy. Hey, so we are not my DJ. We are not my DJ. There is that white boy. Yeah, do what? There is that white boy. Anyways, please, who is your name? Mama is Chuckles. So, um, you could. Mm, yes, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so listen to please I just means your little life in the box and that will suffocate you and leave you with main regrets. You are made to fly, so spread your wings and fly. Don't walk on the ground because they will see you flying and think you will show up, my friend. That is their problem and they can bust up like a tennis ball in front of you. My name is Shifley. Or see two or see two. <laughs> two to seven for God for me. Don't walk on the floor, sissy. <laughs> Looking so succulent. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks for watching this video, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel for regular updates. Yeah. Oh, and we are socializing on Instagram and Facebook at Life Beans and Therapy. Bum.